Admiral Rinaldo Veri, Ambassador Maurizio Moreno, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I highly appreciate the opportunity offered to me today by Professor Ronzitti, President of the International Affairs Institute, to address you on the role of navies in facing piracy. I will try to give you a comprehensive overview of the problem, highlighting the international efforts in the field in shedding lights on the purely military aspects of the fighting piracy. I would also extend the analysis to the perception of the phenomenon by navies in reaffirming the principle of the freedom of navigation in the high sea, as well as the consequent role of safeguarding, safeguarding the economic interest of the nation at sea. As globalization and the increased inter in their dependence of all peoples and goods on earth, freedom of navigation on the high sea and free access to the sea lines of communication constitute a basic embraced by all nations whose population live in great majority, 90% and growing, within 200 kilometers of the coastline. Seaborne trade has more than quadrupled in volume of over the last half century and now stands at over 90% of the world economic traffic, of which 95% passes through the key choke point, including the Suez Canal and Bab el Mandeb, the Strait of Hormuz, the Strait of Gibraltar, the Bosphorus Strait, the Straits of Malacca, and Singapore and Panama Channels. Although representing only the 1% of the world sea surface, Mediterranean Sea plays a critical role in this global maritime traffic net, since 20% of the sea trade passes through this vital basin, connecting Europe, Asia, and Africa. Today's global security environment, referred to maritime domain, faces a growing number of challenges. One of these is the contemporary maritime piracy, re-emergent in recent years as a modern transnational threat. Such phenomenon is characterized by unique features. Firstly, it is the oldest considered since ancient Rome as a crime against the entire society. This firm belief has increasingly rooted in history and led the response to piracy to be universally recognized by the international law as an inescapable collective need. Piracy is a crime that requires the presence of a number of factors, such as a permissive political environment, weakness of the local states, cultural acceptability, and the opportunity for reward in order to flourish. Despite its intrinsic danger, piracy remains a profitable activity and worth the risk of thousands of unemployed people living in desperately poor and often unstable countries. Since uh, 2008, piracy has emerged as uh, an unprecedented threat in the waters around the Horn of Africa, where Somalia, a country with over 3,000 kilometers of coastline, second Africa longest, has lacked the central government able to control most of the country's territory since 1991. However, this kind of criminal activity is not exclusive of the Horn of Africa, but is it has been a significant challenge in the Southeast Asia and is uh, spreading out with different features in West of Africa. Last 16 October, the International Maritime Bureau has released its report focusing its attention to the Gulf of Guinea region, in, the particular, in particular in Nigeria, where extreme violent groups well-equipped and better coordinated than those operating of the Horn of Africa are used to attack oil and gas tankers. The Indian Ocean, the Arabic Sea, the Horn of Africa, and the Gulf of Guinea are indeed 
a high strategic arena for worst nations, in particular for the European Union and Italy, whose economies are strongly interlinked with these zones. They constitute a fundamental portion of the geopolitical concept of uh, wider Mediterranean, where our political, economic, and social interests are at stake. The Gulf of Aden and Somali Basin are yearly crossed by over 25,000 ships, of which 6,000 strictly linked to national interest and 1,500 Italian flagged. The Indian Ocean is an high road where two-thirds of all world oil trade, half of the world's container traffic, and one-third of the traffic of the so-called bulk goods are transiting daily. Moreover, in recent years, the amount of goods transported by sea has increased significantly from 6 million of tons in 2001 to almost 10 billion of tons in 2012. To this regard, the international community is well aware of the consequence that this threat may have on the Mediterranean, one of the largest hub around the globe, as many stakeholders may prefer to divert merchant traffic to Cape of Good Hope circumnavigating Africa, thus cutting off the Mediterranean from the great economic flow. As an immediate consequence, Lloyds have included piracy among war, war risk, charging costs much higher than the usual maritime perils. Piracy is then an alarming phenomenon which may cause severe impacts on medium long term if not tackled opportunately. It is exactly the enormous potential risk of economic shock of small criminal groups threatening one of the world's primary trade routes that has drawn an expensive international commitment to countering piracy off the coast of Somalia. Since piracy takes place on the high seas and often very far from the shore, Combating piracy acts require more than the typical police prosecution cooperation, which is predominant in land-based ordinary law crimes, such as theft or robbery. For this reason, supported by a responsive role in the United Nations, navies have been called to play a pivoting role in fighting piracy. Despite an unprecedented maritime naval deployment in the region, which sees three international task forces, one is NATO, one is EU, and the other, the other one is a coalition led by USA, and nine independent nine national counter piracy missions by China, India, Iran, Japan, Korea, the Republic of Korea, Malaysia, Oman, Russia, and Yemen, navies as frontline entities have been able uh, to treat symptoms uh, rather than defeating uh, the threat. Fact is that over five years into this effort, thanks to the non-stop commitment at, of navies at sea, the international community has been able uh, to mitigate the rise in piracy in the Horn of Africa region, but uh, has failed to change the dynamics uh, that have allowed piracy to boom in the region. Although piracy criminal activities at sea are, de facto, the effects of a phenomenon, whose root causes are still residing in the Somali territory, no boots on the ground policy adopted by international communities still under harsh debates has identified the sea as the only possible element were basing all counter piracy operation on the sea and from the sea to land, thus strengthening the sea basing concept. For this reason, navies continue to represent the most appropriate way to ensure a credible presence in the international community in this wide strategic arena, which covers about two and a half million square miles 
an area roughly 50% larger than the territory of the European Union. Due to their flexible and polyvalent capacities, navies continue to con the commitment to job both at sea, ranging direction from attack prevention to piracy disruption, going through deterrence, direct and indirect protection of merchant shipping, and from the sea to land through confidence building measures, as well as direct attacks against piracy logistic dumps ashore without collateral damages. In the last five years period, pirates were able to change dynamics and tactics, moving their action from the Gulf of Aden to the Somali Basin, pushing further east to the Arabic Sea, India and Maldives are far south to the Mozambique. This ability to rapidly counter-react to Navy tactics adopted by NATO, EU, and coalition task forces clear proof that piracy phenomenon is better organized and structured than initially assessed. Call for an extensive and effective surveillance coverage of the area, as well as an intensive intelligence information sharing among all the actors involved, is necessary. Thus, a better coordination among nations' operational centers military and civilian, to achieve an effective integrated surveillance would be beneficial to prevent and deter pirate attacks. To this regard, I would like to underline the commitment of the Italian Navy in the field of information gathering and sharing at the foundation of our integrated maritime surveillance policy, which is pursued through an interagency approach at national and international level. The Interagency Center, the ISM, Dispositivo Interministeriale Integrato di Sorveglianza Marittima, is the practical application of such concept at national level getting together all national maritime agency actors under the lead of the Prime Minister Cabinet and at international level. I would like to mention the success of the Virtual Regional Maritime Traffic Center an ambitious, an ambitious Italian project launching in 2004, which today allows the exchange of information among 33 navies operating throughout the globe, from the Brazil to Singapore. However, the extent of the area of operation, the uneasy meteorological condition and the threat peculiarities, as well as the need for an adequate coordination among all operating assets in the arena, ask for appropriate tools to be used in terms of size and autonomy with performing C2 and surveillance capabilities, special forces, Marines boarding team embargo, air assets, ILO and manned aerial vehicle, but overall ships able to intervene quickly. Keeping these aspects in mind, most of the Western navies, and Italy as well, have undergone a depth fleet modernization process toward a more flexible and balanced naval instrument. The incisive Navy action at sea already consolidated is appropriately emphasized by a decisive diplomatic action on land through the so-called key leaders' engagement in order to build confidence, influence uh, local leaders, improve awareness, and help to develop coastal surveillance capability, also through maritime capacity building dedicated programs. <clears throat> this action could be contextualized within the Navy historical role of naval diplomacy, which have seen in the past navies operating in synergy with foreign affairs departments. Recently, it has appeared that ships' protection through preventive reactive measures like the best management practice and the autonomous vessel protection detachment resulted to be effective self-defense measure to mitigate the problem in short term. Although no merchant vessel embarking protection team have been hijacked so far, 
This cannot be considered the silver bullet, but just a complementary measure within a comprehensive effort. From a pure maritime perspective, I would like to quote Hugo Grotius in reaffirming the principle of freedom of the sea in his work, Mare Liberum. Sometimes we, as individuals and an organization, tend to follow the easier path, sometimes the more convenient in economic terms, sometimes the less dangerous, sometimes we say it's opportunities, often in the short term, sometimes we lose what is at stake, recognizing the bad effects in the long run. As started as Hugo Grotius five centuries ago, the freedom of the international sea is a prerequisite for any well-being and economic growth, a freedom directly interlinked with the maritime security. At the Italian Navy, we do believe that in the long-term strategic vision, far from the quarterly results of stock market habits, the considerable presence of gray owls in the high sea is a must. My perception is that single ships short-term protection throughout the market private or military protection teams cannot be compared with the long-term Navy presence. Piracy itself is just one of the symptoms, a bad symptom, but what is really at stake is the overall use of, of a free and secure international sea. Is there anyone in this audience who would put his life in danger passing through inhospitable sea, protected by exchange of fire between pirates and contractors? Would you feel more comfortable passing through aside a Navy ship whose deterrence effect keeps the sea safe and secure? That's the point. A safe sea in the short term risks to become a no man land in the long run a place where everybody is free to fire with or without the legal voyager. It is not a safe place. On the contrary, enforcing the principle of a free and secure international space where the use of force is a Navy prerogative is less economic in short term, but surely more affecting and cheaper in long run. Navies have collectively the role or guarantee good order at sea, whatever and wherever the symptoms are, and as a consequence, by creating preconditions for a secure use of the sea, they have a role to act as economic capacity enables. By achieving an effective maritime security, navies have therefore a pivotal role for reconstruction of fundamental economic bases like commerce, fishing, legal exploitation, and marine resources and tourism. This is our role, more complex, face it, interdisciplinary than just a constabulary role. To conclude, whilst the international community is engaged in long-term institution building in Somalia territories, thereby addressing the roots causes of a piracy, Navy's contribution in maritime security, maritime capacity building, confidence building, and information gathering cannot be underestimated. This cooperative effort for restoring good order at sea surely enhances Somali capacity to create adequate living condition for the future, but overall reaffirming the principle that wherever needed, the international community stands ready to defend the vital global interest of the freedom at sea. Thank you for your attention.